Hello everyone, this is Steffi coming to you with another Art Docent program. Today we are working on Series 5, Group E, and we are witnessing artists who have painted villages. Many artists were born in small villages. They grew up and then sometimes left their home villages in order to study art in a large city. Many returned to these villages in order to paint them and the people who live in them. Sometimes villages grow into large cities. Villages usually have such buildings as stores, homes, churches, and schools. Some villages are built around a square or a plaza. Some villages have one main street with buildings on both sides. Some buildings are on a hillside. Some crowd the banks of a river or seashore. Perhaps our shopping malls are like villages although a little more empty nowadays with the quarantine and coronavirus. The first piece that we will view today is called Village Feast by Miguel Vivancos. He lived from 1894 to 1972. The artist Vivancos shows us a special celebration. It is taking place in a village square. Describe what is happening in this painting. I'm going to let the camera travel around so you can see all the different facets of this piece. There are children on a merry-go-round and dancers as well as someone selling fruit. A pet is in the square as well on the cobblestone street. And there's even a band playing on a makeshift stage while more people dance in the streets. Looks like a very joyous occasion. Very bright, colorful, festive. Where do your eyes tend to go when you first look at this picture? There are a lot of people around the structure in the center. You can see people looking from a balcony and from the windows. What kind of music do you think the band is playing? It's a very interesting stage that they are sitting on. Notice how the festive, the festive lanterns strung across the village square make a repeated pattern. Do you see any other patterns in the composition? The repetition of the cobblestones, the tile roofs, the windows, the bricks in the clock tower, the pots of flowers also show a regular pattern of repeated shapes. How did Vivanco show some variety in the way he painted the windows? You take a walk with your eyes starting in the foreground and going back to the building in the rear. Notice the perspective lines of the sidewalks on both sides and the roof line. If you would continue these lines, they would seem to meet at a vanishing point on the eye level line. The picture is almost perfectly balanced, but Bovancos placed the clock tower with its arch opening on one side to make the composition more interesting. He used very bright, clear colors in this picture, and they are just as bright and clear in the background as they are in the foreground. He also made the most of the figures. He made them, excuse me, he made most of the figures the same size, regardless of whether they are close or far away. Notice how he has used outlines around almost everything. Vivancos was born in Spain. As a young man, he worked at one time or another as a clockmaker, a stevedore, who is someone who loads and unloads ships a house painter, an insurance salesman, and a taxi cab driver. During the Spanish Civil War, he fought in the Republican Army and after the war sought shelter in France. He spent the years of 1939 through 1944 in a refugee camp in France. After World War II, he settled in Paris and was encouraged to paint by Picasso. He had his first art show in 1950 and then showed his work 
constantly, both in France and in other countries. He is called a naive or primitive painter, which means that he taught himself to paint, receiving no formal art training, which is pretty impressive with all of the detail he put into this picture. Let's take a look at some of those lines and windows they were talking about. The lanterns creating pattern, the people standing on the balconies, the roof lines on the tile. Even the trees have repeated patterns. And the shutters. It's kind of a whimsical painting with the bright colors, but very detailed at the same time. Our next painting goes a little bit darker, uses less of the bright, vibrant colors, and almost on this camera looks like a picture instead of a painting. That's interesting. Does anyone recognize this work? It's called Little Street by Jan Vermeer who lived from 1632 to 1675. Do you ever walk down the streets in your town and notice all the different kinds of storefronts and homes? There are many different shapes to discover. The roofs are different and there are all sorts of arrangements of windows and doors. Vermeer shows us a few building fronts in his hometown of Delft in Holland. Although this picture was painted over 300 years ago, if you went there today, you could probably see the same street and buildings looking very much as you see them here. The people would be dressed differently today, of course, and there would be cars and bikes. Vermeer saw Delft as a quiet, peaceful place with an unhurried atmosphere. He painted the buildings and sidewalks in warm, glowing colors. The people are busy at their daily chores and are an important part of the composition. We are looking directly at the scene. Notice the clearly defined windows and doors. Can you find any arch shapes? They are a pleasant change from all the squares and rectangles. The vertical and horizontal roof lines of the largest building lead our eyes in a stair-step fashion. The slanted roof lines in the background give variety, and the soft cloud shapes contrast with all the geometric shapes. There is a good pattern of dark and light. Have sharp eyes and notice the tile design by the door on the right. Let's zoom in on that a little. Many Dutch artists of this period included fine details and loved to paint floor tiles. They were also very skilled at leading our eyes into the depth of a picture. Vermeer has shown us what is down the corridor in the center by the use of perspective lines. Then he placed a figure there. Jan Vermeer was born in 1632. He lived and died in the thriving Dutch town of Delft. He inherited the family business, a shop where silk was woven upstairs and works of artists were sold in the tavern below. He cared for his mother, wife, and 11 children until he died at 43. He worked slowly and with great care, producing fewer than 40 paintings in his life. He is regarded as the finest genre painter of the 17th century Holland genre meaning pictures of ordinary people engaged in everyday activities. So it does almost look like a picture still. Very interesting that it looks like there's a door up there on that 
top floor, but where does it go to? Last time we wondered if that was smoke pouring out of the building because of the dark window, but I think we settled on the fact that it was some kind of foliage. That's a much more pleasant thought at least. The buildings seem to continue on into the background as well. This was Little Street by Jan Vermeer. The last print we will look at today out of this series is right here. It's called Coriel's Ferry. And it's by Joseph Pickett, who lived from 1848 to 1919. This artist painted the river in a spring flood near New Hope, Pennsylvania. The swollen waters are carrying huge uprooted trees that almost look like strange animals. Let's check that out. If you look at the painting closely, can you tell which way the wind is blowing? Every house in the village is very carefully painted. We can see the water wheel. Does the road with its bridge seem flat or does it seem tipped on its side a little bit? We can even distinguish various native trees. Can you find any animals drinking at the water's edge with their reflections accurately recorded in the water? Oh, I missed that one. Let's zoom in a little so you can see that animal. The surveyor's house is pa the surveyor's horse is pati patiently waiting while his master scans the landscape from a higher viewpoint. So let's see. There's the horse that seems almost as big as the house. And then the surveyor is up higher on the hilltop checking out the surroundings. There are some ducks with ruffled feathers in the river. The artist has not painted everything in realistic proportions, which we just discovered with the horse. If he had painted them as small as he saw them in nature, they would have been very small. Perhaps he wanted to make sure the viewers saw every detail that he thought was important, and so he made them larger. Where do you think he was sitting while he painted this view? probably from above, looking down as the horizon is up high. What are the dominant colors? Do these colors give you the feeling of a rain in a stormy day? Joseph Pickett was born in this village. He was a citizen of humble birth, and we would know nothing about him if it was not for his paintings. At various times, he was a carpenter, a boat builder, a storekeeper, and a carnival pitch man. His ambition was to record in paint the life of his hometown in all of its aspects. He taught himself to paint and being a primitive or naive painter, he was interested in every detail and added many small touches. 
He was quite skilled at showing objects in motion, flowing water, and trees bending in the wind. Coriel's Ferry. Have you seen this one before? Out and about? Well, thank you for putting up with me today and a lot of my mispronunciations about different words. I really do miss having you all face to face and being able to hear your take on what these paintings make you feel. So hopefully soon we'll all be together again and able to do just that. But until then, stay safe, wash your hands, and hope to see you soon.